What time is it? Like 10 o'clock? Almost? Back out on the water and it's uh... Turn my brightness down. <laughs> There's the dock. <laughs> this light is crazy. Ooh, look, bro, look at the water steaming. You see that? It's our house way up there. Out here, speaker. Big Ryobi light. And this giant flashlight. So it'll go on low for like 12 hours. And then, yeah, there we go. <laughs> cool. My friend's way out there. Okay. <laughs> Turn the lights off, it gets a little dark. You know what? Yeah. Those are really shooting your 20 minute ride, dude. Don't let's. All right, guys, got to add a little clip in here because um, we didn't re really, re well, I think uh, Shelby and Carol Ann probably recorded quite a bit um, when we were drinking that night. I'm not sure what they're posting in their vlogs, but um, I didn't record too much. Um, we broke out the Bongzilla that Jake bought at Spencer's. That thing was cool as heck. It definitely is built for more than three people, though, I think. So with all, I think it, it has six or seven, like, tubes on it. With all those connected and then the little funnel up top i think it holds like 12 cans of beer or something like it, th it said and you saw me flash the flashlight in there because i was like man this we've only put like five or six cans in but it's like full it was like this much foam aside from that one beer that i shotgunned the prior day this is like literally my first time like ever drinking beer and getting drunk off beer it was definitely like a little bit different like i've i can count on like one hand how many times i've actually been like actually drunk because with me, I go from like zero to drunk. Like I don't have like a buzzed or like a, just a lightly buzzed type thing. Like I go from feeling like absolutely nothing to feeling like definitely drunk. I don't know if that's normal or if anyone else is like that. But um, I just kind of went from like, after we did this, I was like, you would just feel it in your head. I was like, whoa, I'm definitely drunk. But uh, it was super fun. We started a fire, you know, we did some s'mores. Most of them kind of chilled in the hot tub or played pool. Um, we had the music going. It was genuinely a blast. And my issue is when I drink, the reason I wanted to make this video, usually when I drink, um, like I said, it's like vodka and cranberry juice or vodka and orange juice, stuff like that, like fruitier drinks that actually taste good. Because like, I'm like, if I'm drinking, I want to also enjoy the beverage. I don't know. It's, that's just me. And beer to me tastes gross. Liquor is nasty to me. Whiskey tastes nasty. Vodka is nasty. Like I've, there's... Not a drink that I can just sit there and like be like, oh yeah, after a long day's work, I want me a, a glass of whiskey or something like that. Like, no, that tastes like literal dog crap in my opinion. My issue is like usually once I start getting drunk, like the bad taste kind of goes away and I'll be like, oh, let me try this, let me try this. And then everybody that's around, Shelby, Carol Ann, Jake, whoever, is like, here, try this, this is really good. Try this, this is really good. So I'm trying all these other random drinks and mixing alcohol unknowingly. And then by the end of the night, when the drunkenness is kind of like wearing off, I have to go somewhere and, you know, I get sick. Like it's 
happened like three times and I, I like I said I think I've been drunk like maybe five times total in my life and like three of those times like I've had to expel everything out at the end of the night because I you know just mix so much stuff or whatever and you know everything starts spinning and I just feel horrible and then I go I'm never drinking again because that's not worth it and then I wake up the next morning just feeling like a train hit me but um the beer couldn't put a number on the beers that we had in that thing, you know, because you pour a bunch in there and then you're splitting it three ways. And I'm not, like, sucking that stuff down. I'm just trying to get it down without, like, you know, because it tastes so gross. Um, I would imagine probably upwards of, like, 12 to 15 beers, if I had to guess, because we did it a couple more times. Not full, though. Like, we'd pour, like, a couple in there and then it'd just be, like, me and Frank or whatever. But um, I sat down a couple hours later... I don't, it might have been a couple hours later, it might have been an hour, I'm not really sure, but Shelby's like, oh my god, are you alright? And I was like, no, I'm gonna get sick, and I was totally messing with her, she's like, oh my god, okay, let's go outside, and I'm like, I'm just totally kidding, but the few times I've last drank, this happens, and once I feel like this, I know what's happening next. So uh, she came outside with me, we sat by the fire, and I felt perfectly fine, but like I could kind of feel like the drunkenness wearing off, if that makes sense. And then I was like, well, this is when things, you know, start getting spinny and I'll want to get sick to kind of feel better, you know, and kind of expedite that process along. So we went out and sat by the fire for probably like 30, 40 minutes. Jake kept coming out, you know, super concerned. Frank was coming in and out. You know, everybody was just kind of in and out, like thinking that I was out there dying. I was like, no, guys, like I'm legitimately cool. Just waiting for the inevitable. And it never happened. I don't know if it was like a different sort of drunk because it was the beer or that I didn't mix anything, but um, I never got like the spins. I never got dizzy. I uh, never threw up or anything like that. I woke up the next, like I went to bed. I was so nervous to go to bed. So I went upstairs. We both, we, we took showers. Um, I took a nice long hot shower, just kind of hoping that the the drunkness was wearing off more and more. Then we went, Shelby laid down because she had barely drank. Um, and then I would kind of sat in bed for, I don't know, a little bit. And then I ended up laying down. I was like, oh God, please don't start spinning. I laid down, man, I got so comfy, went right to sleep, woke up the next morning. I had a pounding headache, but overall I felt just fine. So I took some ibuprofen, um, probably a couple hours went by and then my headache was gone. So, uh, that's a successful night for me because I don't, like I said, I can't stress enough. I don't drink much. So that was definitely cool. But beer tastes disgusting. No matter how drunk I was that night, every beer that we had tasted equally as disgusting. It's just like carbonated, like dirt water, man. Ugh. But all right, guys, enjoy the rest. Good pizzas. Okay, instead of adding another clip after this, I'm going to try to add it during it. Um, these turned out delicious, but the sauce made them kind of soggy. So what I would do next time is put the pepperoni down first, put the sauce dollop on top of the pepperoni, and then put the cheese on top of that. I also was also using like a marinara pasta sauce because I could not find pizza sauce. So that might make a difference too. I'm not really sure. But aside from the sogginess, these things are always delicious. I'm probably a little bit more, but... Don't care. It looks good. Super hot.
So funny story here. I'm going to try to sum it up quick. We ordered DoorDash earlier in the day. Me and Shelby ordered Big B coffee, just a couple of coffees. And then Frank, Caleb, Carol Ann, and maybe Jake. I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I know it was most of them. They DoorDash McDonald's. They had like an $80 order. Um, you know, plus the tip and whatnot. And mind you, this was the day, obviously, as you can see on the ground, we got all that snow. That's why we were door dashing. Um, our food showed up. Mine and Shelby's coffees showed up. Uh, their McDonald's never showed up, but it said delivered. So they had to call, tell them that the food never showed up, and yada, yada, yada. And they eventually got refunded, but we could not find the food. We even drove up to the front of the neighborhood. Um, no cars had ever come by. But later that night, they door dashed some pizza because it was the only thing that would deliver. And I told him, I was like, why don't you guys walk up to the end of the driveway so there's like no way that they can mess it up. I bought that super bright flashlight that you can see Shelby carrying right there. Not the one on her head. Those, those were the ones Frank bought. But I bought this like thousand lumen flashlight from Walmart that we were taking on the kayaks in the middle of the night when it was dark. And uh, I was like, take that thing up there. Tell the, the DoorDash people, like, you will be waving it up around in the air. And uh, the lady showed up, and she's like, oh, I knew exactly where this place was. I've delivered, you know, to this area, blah, blah, blah. But she was super thankful, though, that, you know, that they did go up there. Because, obviously, as you can see here, our driveway was not plowed or shoveled or anything. And uh, they actually got their pizza, thankfully. It was very thoughtful to leave. No, I shut that door. I swear on everything, I heard it latch. Really? It's all back roads. Must be here. Well, she used to be a paramedic. She did. She knew exactly. Thank <laughs> you.